guy is a guinea pig. So I hope everybody can hear me now. If you can, maybe somebody out there is just, I uh, see some good mornings and different things like that. Maybe you can put that out there. But uh, I am Troy Fish Slim Becker. Um, I was going to be doing this with the PowerPoint, but it's not coming through for some reason. So we're going to go just with uh, what I've got here and we'll do some hands on presentations. The presentation is nighttime cold water jerk baits dead sticked. And if you have not done this, I hope this will help get you started in the motion to want to do it. It's a fantastic way in this cold water conditions that we're in right now to continue on to uh, towards warmer water to catch some of your biggest quality female walleyes or saw guys that you ever caught. Here in Ohio, we're frozen right now, but we still have spillways that open up. We have different things like that that will be our options that we can still do this. But as soon as that ice comes off our lakes, I'm telling you, get to your spots where our feeding stations we'll talk about and try this dead sticking. Well, let's, for those who have never dead sticked a jerk bait or really understand what dead sticking is, let's go ahead and do this quickly. The definition that I like for dead sticking is when you take a lure, and we're talking jerk baits right now, and you pull this lure to a specific spot in the water column, and then you let it sit there. So that entails meaning a suspended bait that's going to hang there and not sink or rise. You're going to tune this bait so that you can dead stick it. So the only thing that's going to affect this bait while it's pulled down to that spot is going to be the current conditions of the water or the lake you're fishing. It could be wind. It could be current in the water. So when you pull this down, even though we call it dead sticking, this bait's still doing things down there. It might do a little twist turn with the current. It might move with the current. That's dead sticking. Now, as this water gets under 40 degrees, and that's what we're talking about now, it's even more important to pause this bait and let it sit there in the face of these girls at night. It is a deadly way and will catch you some of your biggest fish you've ever caught if you get this down in an effective way. So what we're going to talk about is jerk baits and how we tune these baits as well to do this dead sticking. So how long would we dead stick? Well, basically, I can honestly tell you, once the water gets colder, on an average, it's 15 seconds, maybe 20 seconds from when you pull it and give it a little motion that you're going to really just let it sit there. And you're going to look at things. Look at the stars. You're going to just tend your line a little bit to keep with the bait but you do nothing. After that 10 or 15 seconds, then you're going to give a little action to it by maybe a wrist roll with your rod tip. We're not jerking this. We're not snapping it. We're barely moving it. Why? Because what we're trying to do is mimic those dying shad or lethargic bait fish that are up on the surface areas of these lakes. Now in Ohio, we have a lot of shallow lakes and we have deep lakes. Those shallow lakes, we might only be fishing five foot of water, six foot. But if you have that opportunity, when you're at your lake, look at how these dead dying shad are, if you can find them, and just stand there and watch them and try to mimic that with your bait. You're going to see that they just kind of look dead. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, there's a little twitch. Or they just slowly start moving. Those are keys to what these fish love to come and eat. And that's what we're doing with the jerk baits. Jerk baits that I love, um, I'm not going to be able to because I had them all on here, but I am also very well known for using Smithwicks and Rogues. I've used them all the time. They're fantastic baits, the one I showed you here. But there's definitely others that you can use, um, such as in, in the Smithwicks, you have a whole line from the, I use P10s even, the giant ones that dive 8 to 10 feet. You can fish these in this dead stick mode in two foot of water. It's just about tuning that bait so it doesn't sink or rise and stays right where you want it. Some of the other ones we got out there are, and I've been experimenting with this Berkeley Hit Sticks, uh, Berkeley Cutters. Um, these are turning into fantastic baits if you haven't tried those yet for this year. You've got all the 110 kind of series baits like the Rick Clons, the Lucky Crap, the Mega Bass, um, Spros. All those are awesome. We could talk an hour just on Rapalis from the Husky Jerk, the X-Rap. All these are important. Don't get stuck on one style bait. Why am I saying that? Because there's many times the sound chamber, the rolling motion and vibration of each of these baits is different. Some slash, some barely move, some roll. 
There's times when all those are key and important. So the question is, how do we tune a jerk bait? Well, most of the time we're not fortunate when the water is this cold. Most manufacturers put this to suspend at about 50 degrees in the uh, when you pull them out of their packages. And this 40 degree water and colder water we have in Ohio and a lot of places, that doesn't work. When you put these in the water, what I'll do is clip these on my pole, make a few casts with them, and move them faster on purpose, just working them back. The reason I'm doing that is acclimating the bait to the water temperature. Then what I do is pull it in front of me and I take a look. And if this bait starts rising to the surface, I'm happy because then I know I can tune the bait by using some weight to make it to where I can get it to suspend and stay like we want. If that bait's sinking, a lot of times, then it's tougher because then you might have to take some rings off to change the bait some. So a lot of times if I'm out there and I haven't tuned some and I knew um, and they're sinking, I'll put them to the side and I'll grab another bait to find that one I can tune to fix up. What do we use? Well, I love using storm strips. These are just lead strips about so long. And the other ones use storm suspend dots. I don't use the dots as much because I like putting my weight on the shank. Um, and what I was going to mention, if you have and can note this, I have a seminar on YouTube under the Big Joshy channel or go to Saw Guys Nighttime Jerk Bait or Nighttime Saw Guy Tactics. Type up Saw Guy, it's going to come in the top 10 usually. Halfway through that seminar, you're going to find where I talk exclusively and I take the time and I use this big giant to show you how we do it. So basically, yes, I like putting it on the shank. This would be your lead strip. You put this on. And once you've got that on, you put it back in the water in front of you, pull it down. Usually when you put it in the water, it's going to sink because you've got so much weight on there at that point. Once you pull it back out, you can take clippers and you can snip that with your clippers. That weight, just little slivers at a time, and you keep working that until you get that bait. I've been known to sit there 15, 20 minutes before I even start fishing and getting three or four of these baits tuned. But if you go to that YouTube video, I talk about this in detail for 20, 25 minutes. We just don't have that time today with this. Another thing that guys do is wrap foil, lead solder on the baits. I don't know if you can see that or not, but you see I've got that right there. This is a great way of doing it, too. You just take some lead solder and lightweight, snip you some of this off and wrap it and do the same thing with your clippers. Just nip it until you get that bait pulled down in the water and it suspends for you. So that's just a quick uh, overview of how you can tune a bait. If a bait's really heavy and you're still having issues, see how this has a split ring on it? I'm notorious for taking this split ring off. Why? Because I'm blind and I don't... It's hard for me to tie at night, but at the same time, I've found that a snap, a, just a regular snap, which I'm going to show you because this is, a, is what we're talking about. Just to do a snap, a number one, when you tie that to your line, it's the same basically weight as what that ring was. So you're not messing up your uh, time frame. The uh, next part of that is, since I have this in hand, if you forgot your lead strips, you don't have your solder, and you're like, oh, I'm in a mess. Well, what can you do? You saw the picture uh, or the bait that I had in my hand. Everybody thinks I carry these snaps. Just hear them? I got all kinds of snaps I keep in this. That's for tying onto the line, but I also keep zeros, number ones, uh, twos, and like, I don't know if anybody out there, you know, Vibe's got those real small uh, snaps in them. They're not really the greatest. They like to break open. They're great to put in your tin and save for tuning these baits when you're in a pinch. This is really nice to do when the water's 45 and you're up getting warmer and you don't have to make this thing ex uh, suspend exactly and stay there. Maybe it rises or you want a little slowness. Because why? Because you're not pausing it as long. You're going to pause it for maybe three to five seconds in warmer water and twitch, twitch it, and then pause again. So that's an emergency way you can do it. It works great, I'm telling you guys. That's one thing to keep in mind. So now that we got those tips, the question is where are you going to use 
these dead sticking techniques. Coming into, you know, the fall is the same as the spring, but reversed. You're starting out as cold water conditions. Let's talk Indian Lake, Buckeye Lake for shallow lakes. You're going to be looking for those current channels. You know, we've got all kinds of area that's three to five foot, six foot deep that we look for pinch downs. And what do we love? We love wind in those because it creates some chop and some current. Those are places you're going to look to do this dead sticking. If you get some current going in that channel, it's awesome. Throw that bait up ahead of you, pull it down to the depth you want it, and then tend your line and let the current sweep it along, same as you would do in a river. And just tend your line and keep up with it. And every now and then, giving it that little subtle roll we talked about, and you're going to get these knocks. A lot of times as it goes by in that current, you can, and you start to swing it back, be ready because on that swing and you do a pause, those big girls will hit it a lot of times that way. Um, other things to look for are around bridges, harbors, anything like that. And one of the key things at night that I look at, and especially this fall was having a lot of fun doing, is driving around the lake looking for the natural lighting areas that you can find. Lights that are on all the time through the evening, what are those? They're beta tractors. And you can go to those places and use this dead sticking uh, jerkbait technique and really light up these saw guys as they come in to these lights. A lot of times they're not right on the lights, they're out on the shadow lines. And it's great to get that bait out past the lights and start bringing it back in or parallel coming through it. Those are ways that you can do this. Harbors, boat ramps, again, anything that's lighted. I know we always talk about, and if you see some of my seminars, we always talk about wind and current and push. Okay, spawn and spring is coming. Your causeways can be very good, rocky areas. But if you know some of the spawning areas of your lake, those areas with deeper water closer to them are pre-stage areas where these fish are going to start setting up, and you can do that dead sticking. Now, one thing I found, and this is key, and I'm glad I remember this, so I apologize that we're doing this kind of freehand right now, is I found this out last year, Indian Lake especially. Our lake is changing. The water is getting crystal clear, isn't it? We're getting weeds. So even though a channel might be three or a harbor five foot deep, a lot of times you're only a couple feet down and you're in weeds. Do you quit fishing it? Don't. I found out that the, this is a fantastic way to fish above these weeds. But the key again is tuning that bait. So when you pull it, it stays where you're at. I was literally last fall, I've got pictures and guys have seen it, or 20, 20, 25 fish in a two and a half hour period, fishing three to six foot of water. I'm fishing this bait six inches under the surface. Never went deeper than that. If I pulled it deeper, I wasn't getting bit. And a lot of times what happened, I was getting weeds. I know that goes against what a lot of your philosophy guys jerk baiting is. You see us pull these things down and get them as close to bottom because everybody thinks the saw guy lives on the bottom. And that's the only place they are. Well, they're not. They'll, they're travelers. They'll move. They'll hover up just like a walleye and suspend. Remember, those bait is on the surface. But what is that clear water done for us? We don't need to dig this down in their face. They can see three, four, five feet up. And you keep this just under the surface. Now you put it in their feed zone where all those other bait are. And they were coming up and just annihilating these jerk baits. And that's going to lead into our second part when we're done here uh, uh, real quick on the swim baits and high water column. I found that technique out by using this jerk bait technique higher in the water column. If you're on deeper water lakes, it's going to be the same things. You're going to look for those spawning areas, causeways, rocky shores, flats, points. If you can find a flat or a point dropping off into nice deeper water, those edges that you can throw from shore with those long bait casts, get it out there, pull it down. You don't have to pull it deep again. I'm fishing some spots at Allen Creek over 20 foot, 15, 20 foot, but I'm fishing three to eight feet down, three to five feet down, not down all the way. Some of these fish saw guys act like the walleyes and they come up and they love to get in that 10 foot range and higher and hover looking for those bait fish that are up above. You think about that. The guys at Lake Erie, they're looking for those ones in the high water column, not the ones down here usually. These are your active fish, the ones that are up there feeding. So don't always dig deep with your jerk bait 
and dead stick it deep. There's times when that's the way you got to do it, but be um, try different depths in the water column, and it's going to help you and benefit you in along with a lot more fish. Rivers, real quick, spillways. A lot of people don't think you can dead stick or use jerk baits in these. If you're not, lose a few of these baits, try until you get it figured out. But again, by tuning your bait, and a lot of times you can even make this so it slow rises a little bit because you are using with current, you're going to be able to catch some of your biggest river saw guys that, that are out there at the spillways. Again, it's that same technique I talked about, quartering or throwing up, pulling the bait down, getting it to into the current and let it start naturally flowing with the current and just tend your line. Don't pull this fast and because these fish are watching things that are naturally, they're used to that. And they're not looking for that big darty movement all the time in the super cold water. It's kind of like steelhead fishing, things like that. If you put that bait fast or drag it, those trout won't touch it. A lot of times these saw guys or walleyes won't touch it either. But by allowing that to go with the current and then every now and then doing those little rolls or little movements of your bait and then pausing it and letting it go, all of a sudden your line tightens up and you get that nice river or saw guy or walleye on there. So those, those are places that you can use this technique. The more you use it, you're going to love it. You're going to start using the jerk baits not only for dead sticking, but for quicker action where suspending can still come in play all season long. Um, I got a lot of guys that think once it gets warm, you don't want to use a suspending jerk bait. I do a lot with floaters, but the Berkeleys and some of them in the river, I was having a blast just pumping those things down with the suspending and getting them in that same flow, but giving it a harder movement because the water's warmer. So let's go on with that and we'll stop at our jerk baits right there. And we're going to do questions and answers here. I'm going to and let me see what time we got. I'm going to spend about six, seven minutes here on swim baits real quick and talk about the water column. Then we're going to open it up to questions and answers. Let's see. What I like, and everybody can see, I am a big Joshi fanatic. I've been around with these since the day they were born. And the reason we I love them and the reason we designed them was because most of the factory or commercial plastics that are out there just get too stiff when you get into cold water conditions. So we worked and found us and made us a swim bait with a formulation that you can swim this, and this is a 16th ounce jig head in 33, 34 degree water at super slow speeds and still get the roll and the tail action that you would if that water was 70 degrees and not have to get heavy with your bait. A lot of the ones that are out there right now commercially are they get so stiff, you have to put a 3 16th or a heavier one on, and you got to reel it faster. Well, these are not wanting it fast. They want this slow and lethargic, just like we talked about. Remember I told you I was doing the jerk baits high in the water column. That's what I'm talking about now with these. Take that night, they quit hitting that jerk bait. I always have a second pole ready with, with a swim bait. If you're not using swim baits in cold water, again, this is another technique. You are missing the boat. Cold water swim baits are unbelievable. And the way they hit these, they inhale. But I was throwing this and keeping my rod tip high the minute it hit the water. So I was keeping this bait maybe six inches to a foot under the surface and doing nothing more than a slow, steady reel. Maybe paused for half a second real quick to let it kind of fall a little bit, but keep it reeling. Why is that key? There's some biologists and some articles that are out there about swim baits, why they work so good in cold water. They tell you, don't get crazy with the swim bait. Let the bait do the work for you. It has a natural rolling and swimming motion that when the fish with their laternal line feel that, which many fish feel before they ever see the bait, they then know and feel that this isn't something they need to check out. They literally think this is live food for them, and they come up and what do they do? What do I tell you guys out there when we talk? Have your needle nose pliers with you when you swim bait because they inhale it. This bait's down their throat. And if you're doing this jerky kind of hop, roll, wrist going through, when that water's above 40 and some of that, it works fantastic. But in this really cold water, 
take these, try different weights. It doesn't have to be just high in the water column. But I've found here that the suspended fish, a lot of times when we use our swim baits, what do we do? We put a 3 16th, 8 heavier, and we're down here on the bottom. We're underneath the fish. We're not where the active fish are. And we're dragging these, hopping these, doing things like that. Well, a lot of times what we're doing is totally missing out where the fish are. So try that bait. I've done this with the 16th. We have a 275. These are the 325 size. This is a heavy, little heavier jig. But I also love throwing a J5, especially my deep water lakes. But this can be fine even in the shallower water lakes. We had really great success at Buckeye and uh, Indian with these this year. Same thing. Super light. That's a 16th ounce lead head that's smashed, as you can see. So it's super light. But these baits have been designed to give you that action. Now, the J5 might not give you as much at a slow speed, but I don't care because I really don't want a lot of action. Remember we talked about these things kind of laying in the water, kind of just stiff and going? Well, you keep this high in the water column and slow, steady reel this and see if that doesn't bring you some quality fish. I guarantee it will. You can make yourself a little teaser or um, the extra hook. We take a snap with some um, braid, high and tie a treble hook on. These J5s come with a uh, belly slot as well. And we take one of the treble hooks with that snap come down here and we bury it. And we have two hooks sitting out here that are for those short strikers. And that will up your game also on the short striking. You can do it that way. Um, also, you can just do the belly hook going through, designed that way. We take these a lot of times and we don't even have weight on them just the hook and throw these out in the currents in the rivers, or if we have current, and just let these things flutter like a fluke. You do it with a fluke, the same kind of thing, and let them flutter and give them little twitches. And these saw guys will come up in that current and just devour these. That's another thing that works great in the summertime that way too. Super lightweight, just let the bait flutter through the water. But that's the high water column aspects of the swim baits. I also wanted to mention about dead sticking that you can dead stick i call it stick in the mud a swim bait as well and we'll talk about that real quick when you're in some conditions where like at indian lake and you're at the channels and you've got a little bit of current flow and it might even be a little muddy I was over there one day and nobody was really catching much they were catching some smaller fish i took a quarter ounce jig and i put that quarter ounce on that solar flare which is all bright orange now I call dead sticking, not high in the water column. I drop it to the bottom and I sink this thing. I want that bait to bury its head basically in the, in the mud. And then I just hold it there like a tight line. Just hold your line tight so you can feel it. Wait four, five, six seconds. Nothing happens. And drag it a little bit and leave it sit there. Dead stick it. What am I doing? That little current in the water is doing that to the bait. Guys, there's times when you stand there like that and you're not paying any attention. And you might have had this happen with a swim bait or whatever. And you're talking to somebody, you just get that hook, that hook set, that bite. It is a killer way to catch fish. And one guy figured it out. And he figured it out and goes, you're not doing anything to that bait. You're just throwing it on the bottom. He started doing it. And the two of us were catching nice quality fish. The other guys couldn't figure it out. They're just swimming their baits along. And they were catching some small ones. So that's another thing that you can use and another technique that you can basically let the current do the work. Your swim bait will be up in the air. That, that tail will, will uh, create the action you need and the vibration these fish can find it. And that day, that water was almost pure mud when we were doing that. So they can find it. That's for sure. I hope I've helped you with some ideas and understanding on jerk baits and how to do the dead sticking technique. Again, I recognize it's a short period of time. I can talk over an hour just on jerk baits. And we wanted to get a couple things in here and give you guys some questions or opportunity where you can throw some questions up on the screen. And I can look at those and we'll go, we'll go through them and see what we've got. Um, if you have not tried it, do that. There's many jerk baits out there. Also, you can follow me as Troy Becker on Facebook. And guys do it all the time, message me with questions, and we talk about how the different techniques and things we do. I'm 
fish slim on Instagram. So let's see if we can get some questions going here and we'll answer these and fire through. I think we got one here. Where do you place the storm weight so it does not affect the action of the lure? Also, do you change your factory hooks? Great question. As mentioned, I don't like using the dots. And you can, if you can't find these online or at your tackle store, these kind of weights or whatever, go to your golf stores, different like for golfing. They put these on their irons and drivers and different things. So you can do that part. But it doesn't really affect. I don't like putting them on the belly because of two reasons with the dots. I think it takes away from your color aspect that you had. You're hiding some of that. The second reason I don't like it is, is because I after fishing this bait at night in cold water, in a half hour, that water might cool down a half a degree. You need to check your bait to make sure it stayed tuned. Many times you're catching fish and all of a sudden it quits. It's not because the fish aren't there. It's because the bait's sinking. So then you nip a little more of that off. By using that suspend out on the body, it's harder to pull it off and nip it. But when you put you put the weights, the suspends on there, or you use the solder, you can easily adjust. I usually use my factory if it's not affecting the bait. If the bait is starting to sink on me a lot, right out of the box, then you might change your split rings to lighter ones. Or yes, you might change your, your hooks to lighten these up. But there are times when you want to keep some of these. I actually got a box I mark S and keep these sinkers in it because there's times in current and conditions with the water a little warmer. That's throwing out that sinking one and letting it get close to the bottom and keeping it down there because it sinks it can be killer. While other guys are suspending or their baits getting pushed up because of the current, you're keeping it down in their nose. So yes, you can do that. Any other questions? We got anything there, guys, we can that uh, you want to talk about or bring up? If not, I can keep talking about some things we still have. Let me see here. We still got about 10, 12 minutes. Let me look and see if we got anything over here. All right. Questions on that. The other part that I mentioned is. is when jerk baits and dead sticking with them is let's go past the cold water now and dead sticking itself and just jerk bait itself. A lot of guys, since you are new at this, maybe or learning the as I mentioned, it a lot of times doesn't mean that you have to now be as important of getting this tuned to where it just suspends. A lot of times, like Indian Lake and places, they they warm up quicker and you get into the spawn quicker. And if you know that area, uh, the South Bank area and those places where we know these girls come to spawn, you can start using these jerk baits. Pull them down, give it that pause, maybe only three to five seconds. Give it a couple twitches to make this thing, and then set. Give it three to four more seconds, let it sit. Other times, though, guys, I'm telling you, just take this bait, pull it down. I found this again this fall. Don't just reel slow, as slow as you can, to the point where you can't feel this bait doing this. You're basically making it just slide through the water and then pause every now and then. That can be deadly. This fall, it was really deadly. Um, some of you guys saw my post where I said, all I'm doing is dead slow reeling the jerk bait. That's what I meant. I'm pulling it so slow that this thing's not. The other key, real quick, is. All right, do you, and, um, real quick on this as well, um, was the sound chambers. Don't get stuck using one because I've had nights where a rattling rogue is too noisy and you put a Rapala Husky jerk on, it's more subtle and it'll do the, it'll do the thing or an x wrap They all sound different. P10 is a one big knock bait and there's some others that are out there like that. When you snap them or you pull them, you're going to hear it knocks totally different. So keep that all in mind. Um, let's see, we got, what color swim baits do you like for the different seasons? I can honestly tell you if I'm going to give you just a couple that I don't have it right with me, but this is our lemon shad. This would be one of them or the silk truce, which is this basic top color. It's a solid one. It's a color that these fish will eat in mud all the way to clear water 
And if some of you guys follow me, what have you seen me do with this lemon shad or with the silk truce is I take a spike it scented colored pens and I color the head of these red and I turn these into a clown. And I'm telling you guys, you've seen the pictures. If you haven't, get on my site and look. They just devour them. One thing I've done is I've turned it into another color aspect, and red seems to be something that saw guys love. But they're also scented, and I have a little bit of glow to them. Um, clear water shad, smoke shad, different ones like that. Of course, Slim's Bait um, is a great color for clear water all the way into moderate. Those are all ones that I suggest. Do you lose lights for night fishing? Great question. We'll do this one real quick and see where we're at. Okay, we still got uh, 10 minutes. Awesome. I go nuts about lights. Saw guys are some not like walleye. Saw guys don't spook like other ones normally do, but they will. And if you want to catch more fish, especially now, Indian Lake, Allen Creek, these lakes that are crystal clear, these fish are normally adjusted to what? The natural lighting that they're getting from these ramps and anything that's around it from the moon. I carry a headlamp. I have a headlamp. I rarely ever shine it on the water unless I'm done or I'm just investigating because I want to see what things look like. If I'm tuning baits, I'm known to walk down away from where I'm fishing and turning my headlamp into the water to test and fix them because Allen Creek, perfect example, deep water shelf with a feed shelf. You can go down there and be catching fish. And the minute a few other guys come down and they have these megawatt lamps on and they wham, hit the water, pack up, you're done. They wonder why they don't catch fish. It spooks them. Natural lighting's fine. You can get away with it more at Buckeye and Indian Lake because there's so much light. A lot of guys like hanging lanterns on the side of the sea walls. It brings shad to them. A lot of the saw guys are used to that. But let me tell you, this fall, those places and lighting up lamps didn't work like it did in the past because that water is crystal clear. I'm walking. I'm finding natural light. Natural light's drawing the bait. You see bait, fish it. These saw guys are moving around. And remember, don't be scared to stay above those weeds. You can take these swim baits or that jerk bait and put it right above the weeds. And you guys trap bait for bass. What do you do? You rip that trap bait through, rip this through the top of them weeds. See what happens. You're going to be surprised how many saw guys are laying in those weeds. Um, let me see here. What's our next one? Where do you target saw guys and rivers besides spillways? Real quickly, I look for any feeder creeks. Um, some of the first holes that start after a spillway that has some deeper water with nice runs are great places to look for the saw guy. The shad even backs down from the spillway as the water lowers and they'll start filling in those. But those saw guys can want, they can, they can disappear for a mile until high water comes again. But if you got feeder creeks and you have high water, those feeder creeks do what? They clear up and slow down. These saw guys will slide right in with the bait into those feeder creek mouths. Those are places to look other than spillways sandbars, anything like that. Let's see, what's another one we got here? When choosing your colors for nighttime, what are you decide, your deciding factors and why? Now, if we're talking jerk baits, jerk baits, I mean, I, I love redhead clown. I love black and silver chrome with orange belly, blue chrome orange belly, a purple darter, which is purple silk truce that you know I love with a, uh, those, you take those right there, those four, and in any water condition, all the way to mud, you're going to cover your bases. Purple darter works great in milky. The redhead clown works great in dirty water. The black and silver all the way to crystal, those ones will work fine for you. On swim baits, again, at night, a lot of guys look at me. I'm a, I love my silk truce. I love my lemon shad. Um, there's times dark water, like the new bullhead that was put out. I love using it because it's that silhouette factor. A lot of times it's just a rotation of baits to see what sometimes clicks. But uh, that red head that I'm putting on top seems to do a lot. Um, let's see, have you used these techniques at Erie? If so, what baits are you using? I used to do this back in the 70s in Lake Erie. We used to wrap lead all over big husky jerks and uh, rapalas. Um, 
yes, you can do it off the piers. Um, there's been guys that have gone up there and guys are throwing the big P10 jerk baits and different things like that, which you, which work. But they're taking the big swim bait, the 325 swim baits and the J5s, and they're throwing these out with a little heavier weight. They're counting them down. They start at too high and they keep counting down. They, so they know they're about that 10 or 12 range, which seems to be that water column range. And they're just steady reeling these things back. There's been days, guys, they're sending me pictures where they got limits of three, five, eight pound fish. And the guys around them didn't get limits. Uh, yeah, the, that's that all these techniques, you put them out on the reefs, humps. You can do this at nighttime, even at daytime in certain places. Um, swim baits are awesome at Lake Erie. Let's see. Do we have anything else on here? Real quick, we're at 940. We've still got five minutes. Um, again, a lot of guys ask me about hooks, what to use. Big Josh, he supplies when you go there. If you go to our website, you're going to see it, bigjoshyswimbaits.com. It's one of the best swim baits out there. We provide a hook that uh, is basically in there. The reason we provide this is to give you an idea of what to look for. And what that is, is a longer shanked jig. Um, the bodies, if you can get ones, a lot of times they're harder to find, but you can get online. A lot of guys are starting to make them themselves now. But uh, this is like a two watt. This one right here is, yes, a one sixteenth ounce two watt. We got three aughts as well. I love this two watt works great with the two seven five and also a three two five. Um, when you're playing with the J fives, there's a lot of swim swim jigs out there, different weights that have longer shanks on them. I play around with a lot of the different ones like that. You can even look for a lot of the ones for salt water um, that'll give you some other added visions with that part. But jigs are important, and yes, quality hooks are important. Uh, but the biggest key that we give you this is to show you what we feel if you can look for and find, because they can be harder to find, are those longer shanked, uh, bigger, wider rock gaps. Do you add sense to your bait? Yes, I do. I don't have them with me. I had pictures of them in my PowerPoint, but I love using lure lipstick or anything like that. With lure lipstick, it just comes in a chapstick kind of form. I'll take it when I'm using it on my baits. I love putting it on the underbelly or under on the underbelly or putting it right in here. Last about 15, 20 casts and then rejuice it. Scent does not hurt you. I'm sorry. Scent does not hurt you. It's not harming you by putting those kind of things out there that kind of get away from your natural smell, the scent that we have. On swim baits, I don't have one with me. Again, it's called Spike It, the company. Uh, if you type it in Google that, they have like four packs. It'll have blue, orange, uh, red, and chartreuse. I love coloring these. I'll actually literally take my silk truce that start fading a little bit. I just take that yellow truce spike it and just color the whole bait over it with again. Those spike it's have garlic or game fish scent. They also have glow in them, very subtle. And I'm going to tell you right now, I am... I use it all the time. It works. That Spike It is an awesome company. Um, and it's so easy because it's in magic marker form. You can buy it in the dip stuff. Don't do that unless you're going to buy a bottle for your pen. You can pop the pen and re soak your uh, felt piece inside and do it that way. But yes, scenting. What's your favorite baits for trolling? Guys, you're asking uh, a guy that doesn't really troll much. To be honest with you, I have in the past. Um, when I do, I love I love P10s. I love bandits. Those are used a lot. If uh, it's Buckeye Lake, Indian Lake, places like that, I will tell you I don't troll, but I love casting. I love casting the flicker shads, which we all do. Uh, I love square bills. Casting shallower running square bills. If you're out there trolling and you haven't tried doing some of the shallower square bills, you know now with the weeds and everything, try some of those that don't go down as deep and nick the top of those weeds. You're going to be surprised. we got one minute left. I really, will, again, appreciate everybody being here for the seminar. Um, this was recorded, I was told. 
So if you didn't get to see it or want to see it again, I think for the time frame of these two days, all the seminars will be recorded. You can go back and see them. It also, um, come see us at our big Joshi booth. It's, you click it up. We have virtual live um, streaming so that we can talk to you. You can ask us questions there. I'll be working the booth through the day. I'll be back through this tomorrow. I appreciate it. And again, thank you all for being a part of this seminar. And I hope I helped you learn some and give you some ideas. If not, go see my seminar stuff on YouTube under Saw Guys. I got three different ones you can watch. Thanks again, guys. I appreciate it. Have a great day. Go through tight lines. On the lamp, I use both. I like the red, easy to see with on the headlamp. But I always turn my back to water. I always do everything away from the water so that it's not shining on the lake. Should be clicking off. Take care, guys. Appreciate it.